Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first ever Five Point Podcast. I am known as the White Snoop, and I'll be here with you. The uh, This episode is going to be, you know, just an overview of a season preview. You know, there's a million season previews out there, so my goal is going to be to speed through this as fast as possible, just giving some of my own insights and, you know, getting this kicked off. Um, I'm going to try to be here with you at least uh, once a week, uh, going over the season as it goes. We, you know, Maybe during some more exciting times, we might uh, do some special uh, additional podcasts for you. So, let's get it started. And of course, uh, <laughs> I mean, where's a better place to get started than with the champs up in Toronto? Of course, uh, tonight they'll be raising their first ever championship banner. Everybody will be getting their championship rings. And the season's going to be kicked off. Um, of course, you know, I, I, like most NBA fans, I've been listening to a lot of the season previews and talking to, you know, other NBA fans. I, I, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like the, this, this, uh, NBA finals duo, like a uh, matchup is so quickly turned into underdogs. And of course we'll get to the Warriors later. And, uh, I've seen some wild predictions anywhere from, you know, of course, people that believe what I'm going to be explaining all the way down to the people that actually believe that this team could truly miss the playoffs. But, of course, uh, one of the big questions is, you know, is Masai Ujiri really going to keep this team together or will he be breaking them apart? I'm a firm believer that I, I, I just don't see why blowing this team up, you know, of course, most teams looking at the free agency of 2021, I just don't see where the benefit is of blowing the team up. You know, they just extended Kyle Lowry, so he's now coming off the books at just the right time. Um, Marcus Saul's a little older, and he can help a couple teams, you know, as far as, um, you know, chasing their championship this year. So, I mean, maybe if the right deal comes along, yeah, um, then, you know, maybe... I can see something, you know, Serge Ibaka, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up, um, re-signing him for one more year you know, next summer. Uh, so I just don't, I, I, I don't see this team getting blown up. And as is I me, mean, of course, the numbers were a little inflated, you know, as far as when Kawhi sat last year, you know, going 18 and four, you know, cause of course they sat him fairly strategically, you know, but they had some big wins as a team, you know, including beating, you know, the Clippers. And then of course, uh, the Warriors in back-to-back nights on the road, both without Kawhi, and impressive wins too. Is at that, um, of course, eighteen and four is on pace to a sixty-seven win team, which is just, you know, unrealistic as far as the Raptors are concerned. Um, I mean, unless they <laughs> surprise everybody, uh, but I think this team can win about you know at least forty-five. You would think it'd be a, could be a fifty-win team. I mean, as far as the East is concerned. And we'll get to the Sixers and Bucks and momentarily. I mean, they're the 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 top two. I think the Raptors can be, you know, the best team outside of of them, and end up in that third seed. Maybe even stealing a, a second seed if one of those teams uh, has to deal with any issues that 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 hurt their um, you know hurt their record you know in the regular season. You know, I I can see them coming out of the first round. You know. Uh, I mean, it would take a lot for an upset to put them in the conference finals, but I think the second round is a is a realistic, you know, place that we can see the Raptors this season. So I'm definitely looking forward to watching them fight and kind of, uh, you know, nobody kind of believed them in their championship run, and nobody believes in them now. I I don't think their mentality has changed. I think Nick Nurse proved to be a great coach. Um, I am really excited to see. Pascal Siakam, you know, in a more primary role, it'd be interesting to see if he can, you know, grow into that. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm so sold. I, I think I like him better as your second option, but I mean, yeah, I guess you never know until you're in, they're in the position. I think uh, one of the other interesting positions is going to be OG Ananobi, who missed 
their entire playoff run, uh, what is he going to grow into? I think he could be integral in the Raptors having a successful season. And for me, I would say a success, like a surprise successful season would be, you know, 55 wins and a conference finals would definitely be more of a surprise level. And that would then depend totally on the growth of those. And, uh, you know, some of the other players, of course, would have to step up into larger roles like Norman Powell and Fred Van Vliet. And, of course, without the, you know, anybody digressing, like, you know, the older players like Kyle Lowry and Marcus All, which, of course, is another, you know, aspect. You know. So I guess we're going to we're gonna see where they end up. Now, uh, sticking into... Sticking in the uh, Atlantic Division, you know, of course, we have the Philadelphia 76ers that I previously mentioned. And uh, they're one of two teams in the East that I truly believe could possibly win a championship. And not to go on too off on a tangent, but I think one of the things that makes this upcoming season exciting is there's so many you know, more teams that we believe could win a championship. I mean, without listing them off, and I want to say that there's probably six to eight, depending on who you talk to. But I feel like each of them also have a reason why you don't believe in them. As far as Philadelphia is concerned, I mean, their size and their defense is just going to be incredible. And if Joel Embiid can stay healthy, uh, Ben Simmons, you know, if he can shoot, and I I don't mean if he can make it, I mean if he can actually shoot. And, uh, you know, the... Tobias Harris kind of steps into his role, and if Josh Richardson can do something for them, I, I just in Al Hor, adding Al Horford, I think is kind of an underrated thing for them. Uh, this this team can be a huge problem, and I mean that literally. But at the same time, I mean if if Ben Simmons isn't going to shoot, if Joel Embiid can't stay on the floor, they they're also going to need a closer. Losing Jimmy Butler is kind of kind of an underrated loss. Uh, the the way he closed and carried their offense down the stretch at times is going to be sorely missed unless somebody can step into that role. Um, I I do believe they're going to be a little bit more cautious during the regular season, so I don't know if they get the number one seed. I can see them at the two or even being cautious enough to, to accidentally slip to the three, but I, I would definitely pick this team to come out of the East and end up in the NBA Finals. Um, another team in the Atlantic Division that uh, suffered a uh, suffered a loss is the the team Al Horford left the Boston Celtics. Uh, I think this team. I, I don't know. People must believe in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown a lot to be picking this team to do so well. I mean, because they just. They those, both those players have to take huge leaps. I think Kemba Walker replacing Kyrie is more of a lateral move. Kyrie is more skilled on the floor, but of course Kemba will be better in their for their locker room, and I think it all just kind of evens out. Losing Al Horford is going to be huge for them. I mean, for what he did on both ends of the floor, and I think an underrated loss, although not quite as severe as Al Horford, you know, Aaron Baines, the toughness and size. I think they just they're gonna lack rim protection. I mean who who on that team is supposed to protect the paint and keep the ball out of the hoop? I mean you you're really gonna defend or depend a lot on your uh perimeter defense, which is brings me back to, you know, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum and, and Gordon Hayward. And Gordon Hayward is not exactly an elite defender himself. I mean, those guys are just going to have to do too much, I think, defensively because you don't have a back line of defense. I mean, Enos Kanter, I I like him offensively, and he, you know, gets his rebounds, but he's just not the protector of the paint that this team is going to need. Uh, I just don't I, – I see them as a good team. I see them in the playoffs. You know, I, I would say they're going to be – um, a 45 win team. I think they can go over 500, but I, I think that's their ceiling. And any advancement in the playoffs would depend totally on matchups. Because if anybody with any type of size or ability to get to the rim, I, I think they're going to be toasted. Um, moving forward to the Brooklyn Nets, 
Of course, uh, I don't even want to discuss KD. Uh, he's he's not going to play this season. I, I, it's cool that he signed there. Yeah, big news. Um, but he's if he's if he's not going to play, I mean, I, I mean, then uh, you might as well talk about me on the Brooklyn Nets because it doesn't matter because we're not playing. Uh, I think it's awesome that Brooklyn was able to get two big names. The only thing I will say, and, and and after this, I just don't want to talk about Kevin Durant anymore. The guy tore his Achilles. He just turned 31. He's not returning till he's 32 years old. He's never going to be the same player that he was in Golden State or Oklahoma City. I mean, he's just he's he's going to be post prime, post serious injury. He'll be good. It's not that he's going to be terrible all of a sudden, but he's he's not going to be a top three player anymore or close to that. It's I would be, I mean, I'll be amazed if he's up there again, but whatever, moving on. Uh, Kyrie, I just, he's replacing D'Angelo Russell, which, of course, is an upgrade. But I want to believe it. It's just... I don't know what he did in Boston off the floor. It's just hard to believe that he's going to be good for a young team. But basketball-wise, he should definitely make this team better. I mean, we're talking about a 6 seed team, young. I don't know why they wanted DeAndre Jordan so bad. Jared Allen is a great young center. I think the only thing that I like DeAndre Jordan better for would be guarding uh, big, bigger, stronger centers. Joel Embiid kind of pushed around Jared Allen in the playoffs. And I think that's the one place where DeAndre Jordan will be an improvement. But $40 million is a lot for that. Uh, <laughs> but they should be, I think they're going to end up being a, about where they were, maybe slightly better. I can see them around the fifth seed, you know, getting getting you 45 wins. And, of course, the final team in the Atlantic Division is <laughs> has been a topic of discussion and not such a positive light, and that's the New York Knicks. You know, of course, everybody, you know, heard all the rumors all last year. They were getting... Everybody thought that it was hands down they were getting KD. They were probably getting Kyrie, and, of course, course they went to New York but not the Knicks um they ended up not with the number one pick although I think I think then losing out on Zion it gets a little bit kind of blown out of proportion because I mean that was out of their control and they ended up with RJ Barrett who should be a good player and <laughs> you know before we you know kill the Knicks for something that was out of their own control I mean let's let's see let's see where everything ends up I mean you know, if R.J. Barrett ends up being a great player, then I, I don't think that that's such a such a major deal. As far as the the signing of KD and Kyrie, I think with the injury to KD and the issues of Kyrie, I don't think that missing out on them is going to be such a big deal. I think as people see, if 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 Kyrie starts causing problems in Brooklyn, and KD never returns to the player that he was, when you, we look back at this, the Knicks are going to look a lot smarter then people are giving them credit for right now. And so let's let's hold our judgment and wait and see as far as that's concerned. Um, them signing four power forwards? Yeah. The, so that, that was a little odd. I, I mean, but, I mean, Julius Randle, I mean, the Marcus Morris one's kind of odd to me. Yeah. I don't know how he helps him, but Julius Randle, Bobby Portis, um, I like I like those young players. You know, see how they play. Of course, Todd Gibson, he's he's there as a veteran. Um, I just kind of want to continue to see the development. I want to see if Kevin Knox can have a better season. I don't think he was as good as advertised in his rookie season, and but I mean he's you know nineteen twenty years old. You know, without looking so. I mean, let's let's give it time. See see what they grow into. I'm I'm not as down on the Knicks 
as everybody else. I mean, I don't not that I think they're going to be good. I mean, they're obviously getting another top lottery pick, but I mean, I'm not as down as everybody as far as their future is concerned. I see all the money coming off in 2021 as we dis- as we discussed. Um, you know, that free agent class is going to be good, and if they can be a <laughs> If they can try to be a respectable organization by then, you know, maybe they can turn that into something. I mean, they do still play in the Mecca. Let's not forget that. So, moving out of the Atlantic Division, let's move on to the aforementioned Milwaukee Bucks. Of course, they were in the Eastern Conference Finals. They still have that guy. Um, I think you've heard of him. His name is Giannis Antetokounmpo. He, yeah, he's pretty good. Um... I would like to see him develop some more. You know, of course, you know, a lot of... There's been plenty of other superstars in this league that weren't great shooters. Um, of course, LeBron has turned into one, but, you know, he certainly wasn't. I mean, if you remember the 2011 finals and the 2007 finals, I mean, even when... Even at 13 to 14, when they played the Spurs again, uh, you know, teams have always wanted him to shoot. I think that... It'd be good to see him develop more of a shot. I'd actually like to see him more in the mid-range than the three-point. You know, be able to attack and be able to stop and pull up. I mean, we saw that with so many stars. I mean, LeBron developed that. Uh, Kawhi, we saw this year. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. I, I think in the playoffs, when when uh, defenses are trying to take away your your first and second option, I mean, you need a third, fourth, fifth option. You need you need to be able to take and make shots that defenses are going to be giving you and sometimes in tough times. And I'd like to see him be that guy, be able to, um, you know, make defenses pay for letting him shoot shots that maybe aren't as desirable as far as, you know, the advanced analytics are concerned. Then, uh, I mean, really it's, it's not even really on him. I, I think his team needs to do better. I mean, them paying Eric Bledsoe <laughs> kind of kills me. I saw that, and I questioned the the idea. I mean, I get it. Like, you know, he's been an okay player, but, I mean, it's a lot of money. And to lock him up when you had Malcolm Brogdon coming on, I would have much rather paid Malcolm Brogdon the money than Eric Bledsoe. I mean, he just hasn't done anything for them. And... As far as the playoffs are concerned, I mean, he let Terry Rozier roast him last year. <laughs> and and then this year, I mean, I forgot he was on the floor at times. I mean, he, he just did nothing. Um, Chris Middleton has to also step up. Of course, he just got his five-year max, and he needs to... He, he needs to up his game as well. I mean, he's he's got to earn that money. And you're getting paid like a superstar. I mean, you got to play like one. Uh, of course, now they have the Lopez brothers, which should be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I just I just want to see more from the role players. I I think last year we, we watched them win 60, 60 games. I mean, they should be able to get 55, 60 games. I think that they're a, probably the top candidate to run away with the number one seed which will give them home court advantage again throughout the playoffs, which will be helpful. I mean, most especially when they play Philadelphia, because, I mean, it's pretty much between those two teams in the East. If somebody else surprises us, I mean, that'd be great to see more competition, but I believe it's Bucks versus Sixers as far as who wins the East this year. So, uh, moving on, we have the Indiana Pacers. I like the Indiana Pacers. The only issue is when is Victor Oladipo coming back? Um, they lost Bojan Bogdanovic. They just extended Demonis Sabonis. Um, adding Malcolm Brogdon is nice. I mean, they've made some moves. Um, I think they're kind of in the same place. I don't see them contending, even if Victor Oladipo was going to be there from day one. But I think... The fact that Victor Oladipo could miss a significant amount of time is going to hurt them. And when he comes back, he's coming off a major injury, which is nothing to take lightly. I think that 
this just isn't going to be a good year for them. Like, it's, and it's not that they don't have um, a good future. I just think there's too many things kind of working against them. And uh, hopefully some of their young talent develops. And then, you know, next season with a healthy Victor Oladipo, they can push and hopefully make that next leap. Uh, but they should still be fun to watch. I like I like a lot of their players. Um, so, moving on from them, we have um, the Chicago Bulls. Of course, another young team. Uh, they have you know Zach Levine, Laurie Markkinen. Of course, is their their figureheads on a, a another young team. The Bulls are one of two teams, and I'll get to the other one later. That. I don't expect to be good, but should be fun to watch. And I honestly wouldn't be too surprised if they surprise me. If I had to predict, I would say the Bulls are a 30 to 35 win team. But if they ended up winning 40, 42 games and slipped into the playoffs as an A seed, I can't say I would be surprised. They have a lot of good young talent, and a lot of them are kind of at that age where sometimes they just come back from a good summer and make a good leap. I think, you know, especially if one of their young players is, you know, kind of in the, uh, makes a leap that puts you in the, you know, the, the most improved player type conversation, then, you know, that they could, they could be that extra boost. And I think, Especially in the beginning of the season, I mean, nobody's circling Bulls games <laughs> as as you know their their main their their you know main game that we have to you know wait till we get to Chicago you know and so I think they can sneak up on teams. I think they're gonna you know they're gonna upset some some teams that aren't prepared to play as hard as they should when they when they do play the Bulls, and uh, that could work in their favor. I mean, of course, it only works at the beginning of the season until people start realizing, like, oh, you know, these guys can actually, you know, win games. But, you know, they can they can definitely uh, they can definitely sneak up on some people. So they'll they'll be they'll be interesting to watch. I'll, I'll definitely be watching some some Bulls games. Um, another interesting team is Detroit. I like a lot of the players. I just don't like the makeup of this team. Andre Drummond seems to be outdated. And he seems to have flashes of great games. And then other games, it's, you know, isn't Andre Drummond on this team? Uh, Blake Griffin had an amazing season last year. Uh, People I've discussed basketball with no I thought he got a little overrated when he first came into league because he was so athletic and he you know he got his highlights and with athleticism he was able to get enough points and rebounds to make his box score look good and I think it kind of inflated who he was but now he's really developed his game but because he's not as flashy I think people forgot about him Uh, I just don't know who he's playing with that is supposed to make me believe in this team. I know they snuck into the playoffs. You know, they they ended up with that, you know, the number eight seed. I mean, Blake Griffin didn't get to play, so I'm not going to judge them based on how badly they were beaten by the Bucs. Um, Reggie Jackson just makes me laugh. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how he got that contract. I don't know who he, like, like, if I need an agent, it's his, because he got that boy paid. Um, I like Derrick Rose. I've liked the renaissance of Derrick Rose. But the thing is, is if I like Derrick Rose and Blake Griffin, the thing is, is I like them both with the ball. I think Blake Griffin, when he played with Chris Paul, I think that limited one of his better basketball skills, which is his ability to pass. And I think... In Detroit, he showed he's got he's improved his uh, his dribbling, uh, and I like him as a playmaker. You know, playing from that high post position, he's also improved his shot. 
he's a you know a better shooter. Just not sure. Um, like I said, I just don't know. Don't know who's supposed to help him. Um, I think he'll help them win games. I think they're going to be around 35, 40 wins. I can see them sneaking in the playoffs again, but I, I wouldn't really be surprised if they miss, especially if Blake gets hurt. You know, other guys can get hurt. You know, Reggie Jackson's been, you know, has missed significant time. You know, Derek Rose, while he's been healthier in recent years, you know, has had his own issues. And if we're depending on Andre Drummond to carry this team to a playoff position, then sorry, I don't believe it. I would almost more bet that they that something bad happens and they miss it. So, speaking of missing the playoffs with one good player, um, the Cavaliers, the final team in this division, uh, I mean, I don't know what else there is to say besides they're not going to be good. Um, Kevin Love is the only player in this team that I believe is that good. I just, I, without double checking their roster and, and seeing if they signed somebody that I just don't remember. Um, Colin Sexton's okay. They draft another point guard. Um, I don't know if David Kahn is in charge. You know, if they're just going to play a bunch of point guards. But, I mean, it's to me, they're more about developing young talent. I know Kevin Love is saying the right things about wanting to stay in town, and that's great. But please get that poor boy out of Cleveland. <laughs> I just don't want to see him wasting away. I mean, I'm sure he's not that mad about it. I mean, if I was getting paid like him, I wouldn't be mad either. But I just don't want to talk about the Cavs anymore. So <laughs> let's move on to Florida. We'll start with Orlando. They were in the playoffs. They had a really uh, great game one. They they stole that win before getting destroyed in the next four games. Um, they paid their guys. They brought them back. Uh, Nikola Vucevic, he had a great season for them. I mean, Terrence Ross was integral. Uh, Aaron Gordon keeps looking better. Uh, Jonathan Isaac. I, I I like this team. They have a good young team. I think they're they should definitely make it back to the playoffs. Their defense, as it shored up later in the season, um, under Steve Clifford, I think who doesn't get talked about enough as a good coach. They should definitely be a tough team. I mean, this is definitely a team that teams are not looking forward to playing because uh, it's not going to be easy wins. Their defense is, is, should be good. I, their defense this season should reflect how it ended last season, which was a top defense in the NBA. Um, I think the one other interesting thing to watch is, of course, Markel Fultz that they got from Philadelphia. I'm assuming that he's going to play. I'm very curious how he plays as an NBA fan. Like I believe everybody should be. I'm definitely rooting for him. It would be nice to see him turn into an NBA basketball player. And I think that it says something that they've already picked up his option and they're willing to pay him, you know, another season for $12 million dollars. And they're the people that are watching them. I mean, sometimes all you need, and this is not just with basketball, any sport, sometimes you have to pay attention to what the team that's watching him every day sees in him and if they believe in him or not. And the fact that they can believe in him after what they've seen gives you some hope that he should work out. And I think it'd be great. It'd be Obviously, it'd be great for this team. Uh no knock on DJ Augustine, but they definitely need a starting quality, you know, point guard. So if Markel Fultz can turn into that for them, that could be great. So moving forward, but staying in Florida is the Miami Heat. They've always kind of been that tough team, 
you know, ever since they lost the big three, they've been that tough team in the middle of the East, you know, not terrible, but not good. Um, they've overpaid mediocrity. Um, they got rid of Hassan Whiteside, which might have been overpaying below mediocrity. Because, I mean, he, just, he was just awful. I mean, I don't know what's going on with Deion Waiters, because that's an interesting scenario right now. Um, James Johnson wasn't ready for camp. Um, of course, Goran Dragic makes <laughs> plenty of money for what he does. Adding Jimmy Butler is going to be interesting. He embodies heat culture. There's no bullshit. He comes to work, and he works hard, and he expects that from everybody. I mean, I think we all know that after what he did in Minnesota. <laughs> he doesn't play games, and he's not afraid to say something. I am curious how the rest of the team is going to react to that. I do feel that this is nowhere near a finished product. I mean, Jimmy Butler can make – I mean, they missed the playoffs. And I think Jimmy Butler can win them enough games to bring them into the playoffs. But without moves, they're clearly a first out team. The belief that Jimmy Butler can drag them to a four, you know, a three or four seed to get home court in the first round, I just think is too much to ask of him. I think he'll be working hard enough just to keep them in the playoff race. I wouldn't be surprised if Pat Riley ends up making another deal this summer, like near this season, I mean, um, to try to add something to give Jimmy Butler that help. Of course, Chris Paul being a player that's been talked about a lot, as I'll get to that situation. But, um, but yeah, without, without help, I just don't see this team getting above maybe a seven seed. I just don't think Jimmy Butler has enough help. Um, and I think there's just too much going on. Uh, that I think they're also going to struggle out the gate with, you know, if James Johnson's not playing, Deion Waiters is, you know, he's suspended and causing drama. It's just they're not going to have a great start. There's, I would be surprised if Jimmy Butler is able to drag this team. And, while I think he gets underrated, if he can drag this team anywhere above a sixth seed without a major trade happening, then I've underrated him as well. And I think that he's a top player in this league. So I guess we'll see. Speaking of uh, top players stuck in bad situations, let's talk about the Washington Wizards, where we have uh, poor old Bradley Beal and a bunch of what? Poor Bradley Beal. Well, at least I felt that way until he signed that extension. Once he signed that extension, in case you're unaware, that means that they cannot trade him during the season. So Bradley Beal is not getting traded to your team. So everybody that's been doing the, well, Bradley Beal can go, you can stop that until next summer. That being said, I think that it was probably a smart move because it locks him up for a few more years. He he will be a ten year veteran at the when now in his when he can opt out, which means that he'd be eligible for the largest max deal available. Because the ten year veterans are offered thirty five percent of the max, and I believe that was probably the strategy based on the timing. So I think that was more of a financial move for him. He's not, he's still young. So I think because the clock isn't ticking on him, I don't think it's a bad move. It gives Washington, uh, I mean, the Wizards are going to be bad. I mean, let's be real. They're, they're not going to win a lot of games. They're going to get a top lottery pick. Uh, John Wall's not playing. He's eating up a large portion of their salary cap with his max deal. And there's just nothing really they can do. So just being honest, 
they're pretty much just going to play the season out, get another top pick, and develop a young core to play with Bradley Beal. I mean, they still have to do something else, and I really question what John Wall is going to be when he comes back. That's my only concern for them. Back-to-back injuries that he never even got to return from. He hasn't played... I I don't even remember the last time he played basketball, to be honest with you. And he's going to be older, and a lot of his game was based on his athleticism. It's just not... It's not something that's easy to, to believe in. So, the next team I want to talk about is the other team I was mentioned, thinking of when I was talking about the Bulls, and that's your Atlanta Hawks. They have an awesome young core, and they're going to be so much fun to watch. If you have... NBA League Pass, or during the free weeks, please record Atlanta games and watch them. You will not be disappointed. There is no way that this team can have a game that won't be fun to watch. I mean, they have so much fun talent. I kind of like the Bulls. I can see them around 35 wins. But if they somehow snuck up on teams that aren't circling those games on their calendars the same way fans should. I can see them stealing a few extra games from teams that aren't playing hard enough and weren't prepared and sneaking into a bottom seed in the East. I think with the possibility of Detroit falling out, we don't know what Miami's going to do around Jimmy Butler. I think it just it kind of opens up the possibility for a team to sneak in there, maybe two, if it is the Bulls and the Hawks. I think those are the two teams that are the most likely to, to steal a seed that maybe nobody expected. But definitely, definitely keep your eye on this team. They're definitely building something, and they're doing a great job. And for the opposite of that is the last team in the Eastern Conference, the Charlotte Hornets. All I'm going to say is they let Kemba Walker walk for nothing and they just paid Terry Rozier more money than he'll ever deserve. If Terry Rozier earns that money, then I'm wrong. That's fine. I just, it's kind of laughable to me. That whole roster is laughable to me. They have a couple like okay players. They're like Miami Heat without Jimmy Butler. Overpaid for... Actually, that'd be mean to say about Miami. They have a couple of players that are overpaid. They're okay, but some of the players are overpaid and they're bullshit. They, Marvin Williams is, is making coin in Charlotte. Look that up. <laughs> so, so moving forward, let's talk about the Western Conference. So I alluded to the Warriors earlier when I mentioned the finals when I was discussing the Raptors at the beginning of this podcast. But uh, wow, pe- people are forgetting about them. I don't know if you guys know this, but they have this guy on their team. Um, Stephen Curry. I don't know if you've heard of him. He won that trophy. Um, they call it MVP. That stands for Most Valuable Player. Pretty sure that means you're good. Ooh, and he won it twice. Oh, and the second time, nobody thought anybody else deserved it because he won it unanimously. So that means he's good, right? Arguably the, I don't even know if it's arguably anymore, greatest three-point shooter of all time. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, he's still there, right? Yeah. Oh, and then they had that guy, uh, you know, former defensive player of the year guy, uh, you know, Draymond Green. You know, big part of their 73-win season, that guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's still on the roster. 
they had a D'Angelo Russell. And uh, they have this game in the middle of the season. It's called the All-Star Game for 24 of the best players. And he played in that. And they brought back Kevon Looney, who was big in their recent runs. Mind you, they've only been to five straight NBA Finals. I know it's not anything to... It's nothing major, you know. It's just, you know, a game, right? And yeah, they... Oh, and they won... They only won three, I guess. So, you know, that's not... It's not a big deal. You know, just the two in a row. And So... How do people have these guys outside of the playoffs? Blows my mind. Um, without some type of injury bug, I just don't see it. I don't see them missing the playoffs. I mean, how do you have this team that's been to the finals five straight years? And I, I understand it. Kevin Durant's not there. But Kevin Durant wasn't there the first the first two years either. You know? I think their defense is going to take a hit. You know, losing losing Durant. You know, losing um, Iguodala, and even losing Livingston. Uh, you know, those those were three important defenders for them. But their offense is not going to dip. I don't think, or at least not dip hard. At worst, I think adding D'Angelo Russell is going to help them. Um, obviously Clay Thompson being out for the season is going to be tough. Um, I honestly didn't believe that he would miss the whole season, but now they're saying that he might, or that he's likely actually to miss the whole season. I, I'd still put them at a, in the playoffs though. It just, I just, I don't know. It's, it's hard not to have faith in Stephen Curry, and he still has Draymond Green, and there's still some players. And Steve Kerr gets a little underrated as a coach because he's had so much talent in you know his five years of coaching. So, yeah, I guess we'll see, right? So let's uh, let's stay in California. You know they have uh, four very intriguing teams this year, so. I'll move on to the Los Angeles Clippers, who gave those Warriors a nice little run in the first round. And then uh, they acquired uh, some some good role players uh, you might be familiar with. One of them is uh, Finals MVP Kawhi Leonard, and the other is uh, that guy Paul George. I heard he's pretty good. I think them and Patrick Beverly are going to be a nightmare. A fucking nightmare. Defensively. As far as the perimeter is concerned. I mean, most teams, they try to give you a one-two punch. And these guys have three. They can stop your top three. So you need a fourth punch. There's not a lot of teams that have a fourth punch. <laughs> it's just, I mean, the length and the, the tenacity... They're going to. They're going to be tough, and the fact that they can play games. I mean, how rare will it be that all three of those guys are on the bench? I mean, during there will be times that maybe two, but yeah, they're gonna. They're oh man, they're gonna be a problem. Um, then they got Lou Will, who's gonna come out and get buckets. Uh, Montrezl Harrell. I mean. They got some nice depth on this team around those guys. They're my pick to not only go to the NBA Finals, but I think Kawhi Leonard is about to win back-to-back -back NBA championships and, and NBA Finals MVP with two different teams. Um, I don't think it's given. I'm just saying they're my pick. My only worry with them is they lack size. They don't have, they don't have somebody who can guard a Joel Embiid. And I know you don't stop Joel Embiid, but it'd be nice if you had somebody who could at least slow him down, like Toronto did with Marcus All last year. And the Clippers just don't have that. 
if they were to meet the Sixers in the NBA Finals, like I think they will, the one chance, the one, or not the one chance, uh, the one thing, I mean, that gives the Sixers a chance to steal that series is not only their defense, which will be, the, I guess, the secondary thing, but the one main thing is Joel Embiid can destroy them. I think he can drop 40 a night if he was healthy and playing them. I mean, no, there's just nobody that can guard him. And he can grab as many rebounds as, as he wants. And I think that they need somebody to counter that because there's other centers in the league. I mean, Jokic in their own conference. I think uh, the Lakers that I'm going to get to, they have some okay size as well. Uh, Rudy Gobert. Um, if they play the Rockets, Clint Capella. You know, it'd be nice to have some size, somebody with some size that you can trust to put out there. Um, that's, that's I think, the one thing I, I worry about with this team. But that being said, they are still my pick to win um, the 2020 NBA championship. And like I believe I said already, I think the one thing I love about this season is no matter who you pick, there's a reason why you could be hesitant. And that's my hesitance is the size or lack, lack thereof, I mean. So not moving on far because we're sticking in L.A. and even in the Staples Center, the Lakers. Um, another, another great duo. They have these guys, LeBron, James, Anthony Davis, top five players in the league, arguably the best duo in the league. I think my, well, number one, they they can definitely, obviously they're title contenders. Uh, um, I don't think anybody believes otherwise. My only concerns with them is LeBron just had his first, you know, kind of real injury that missed time. He's going to be 35 at the end of this year, which I'm 35, but out in my normalcy, 35, while it seems young, people forget. In the NBA, 35 is old. Um, be curious to see if he can stay healthy, if he can return to form. The one thing I've learned about LeBron in his career is you don't bet against him. So I'm betting that... I don't, I don't believe LeBron will ever be as good as peak LeBron ever again. I mean, he's 35. But I, at this point, whenever he does decline, I'm going to be surprised. Um, I do think he's going to come back. I, th I still think he's a top five player. I think bes besides Kawhi Leonard, I think Kawhi Leonard, by the way, I should have said this when we were talking about the Clippers, Kawhi Leonard is the best player in the league now. He plays both ends of the floor at an elite level. Nobody's better. And that's the end of that discussion. Um, that being said, when I think of... When I pick my best player, I think of I have a playoff run and who do I want to put my team behind. And after Kawhi, I'd still say LeBron James. And until until he declines or somebody can prove that they're better, he's number two. And Anthony Davis is high on that list. He might be number three. Uh, as a matter of fact, he probably is my number three. I just think he's an incredible, incredible player. I think he gets a little underrated. People forgot about him in New Orleans because the team wasn't that good. And he just never got enough credit. He's a phenomenal player. I mean, this team's going to be tough. Tough. The battle for L.A. is going to be crazy. That being said... If LeBron does decline or miss time, an AD misses time, especially if both of them miss time, it's going to hurt this team. They don't have great depth. And the one thing I've always thought about these LeBron teams over the years is he's had some good players on his teams, and even deep, deep with good players, especially in this, you know, in the past, you know, when he had in the last uh, eight years when he was in the NBA Finals. The only thing I will say is they're not guys that I love. They're not guys that you're like, I know what he's going to do every night. 
They're guys like Avery Bradley that some nights you're like, that's Avery Bradley. And then there's other nights that it's like, holy shit, what happened to Avery Bradley? And I think Jared Dudley, like, I just, I don't feel like I can depend on them every night. I think that those are guys you hope work every night. Because you know if they're if they're working, it's great. But if they're not, I don't know. So I just question. I question their depth. I'm concerned about their health. Seeing Dwight Howard back with the Lakers will be fun. E. I am definitely curious to see how that works out. And mostly for my own personal entertainment. Um, let's move on from the Lakers before I get mean. Uh, let's talk about the Sacramento Kings. Great young team. Another team that, uh, you, I mean, you could buy a league pass just to watch the Kings. Those guys are so much fun to watch. And besides the fact that they paid Harrison Barnes way too much money to play basketball. Um, I kind of like what they did, and I think they're going to be a lot of fun to watch. By the way, I th- I thought <laughs> I thought Harrison Barnes was so stupid to opt out of that contract the final year, $25 million, because I thought he was never going to make close to that again and how wrong I was when they paid him. I can't believe they paid him that much money it's so funny to me sorry um wow but yeah besides that uh i mean darren fox marvin bagley um to see what they end up doing with buddy healed i mean there's a chance they trade him he's a restricted free agent next summer uh unless they plan on either letting him walk or paying him themselves um so I'd be curious to see if he stays on the team or not. Um, but yeah, there, there'll be so much fun to watch. If something weird happens and there's a team outside of who I believe will make the playoffs that can sneak in, it's definitely the, the Kings are mm-hmm. the Kings are definitely high on that list. I would project them to being around the 9 or 10 unless something... I said, you know, Stephen Curry and Draymond Green both get hurt and the Warriors slide out and there's an open spot, you know, maybe they slip in at number eight. The Kings, like I said, and in the West it'll be crazy because there should, there will most likely be over 500 teams that are not in the playoffs and the Kings could be one. So the last team in this division is kind of just been an embarrassment the Phoenix Suns they uh, they got Aaron Baines from the Celtics I guess that's cool um, they signed Ricky Rubio which is interesting I actually think that's a good signing which is why it's weird to me because I'm not used to saying that about things that Phoenix does I mean they, they traded away TJ Warren for no, no reason and they got nothing back. It's just kind of funny. Like they just they do weird. I don't know what's going on in Phoenix. Um, Devin Booker is cool. Let's see if DeAndre Ayton is uh, you know going to develop you know some more. It's like they should be interesting to watch. Even though they're going to be, I mean, they're they're going to be a top lottery pick. Let's be honest. Um, they should be interesting to watch, but just because it's the Suns, I just I can't say that and feel like I believe it. So, moving on. <laughs> um. Wow, this I mean, there's the West is so much so interesting. Let's talk about the Blazers. Um, they were in the Western Conference Finals. Um, they unfortunately didn't win a game. 
I think making fun of them for being swept is a little harsh because they were in those games. They competed. They just... The Warriors were the better team. Kind of end of story. I mean, it's just... No, no, there's no other way to say it. Um, they, uh, I made fun of Hassan Whiteside before. Uh, he is now in Portland. I wonder how long that's going to last. Because if Yusuf Nurkic comes back, he's clearly better. So he's definitely starting. I would take Yusuf Nurkic at seventy-five, like at fifty percent, um, and Hassan Whiteside has always been kind of a crybaby, so moving him to the bench will definitely stir up his feelings. I think he's better off as a trade chip. Um, you can get obviously because you have to match money a guy who's being paid, and if. If I'm Portland, I look at my four position and there's Kevin Love in Cleveland that I've been saying ever since they got us on white side. But I've heard rumors recently that Blake Griffin could end up on the trading block. And man, would that be fun. If he, I mean... Dame Willard is incredible to watch. And of course, CJ McCollum, another great player. But imagine those two playing off the ball and Blake Griffin just putting it where they need to. And if he continues to improve his shot and he can get even a little bit more consistent, he can also spread the floor. I don't know if he'll... which, And him and, and Kevin Love both. I mean, because Kevin Love spreads the floor. Neither of them great defenders. Um... But both of them will also help get you know get on the glass. I I would take either of them over Hassan Whiteside, and I have a feeling that everybody except for Hassan Whiteside agrees with me, because <laughs> there's just no way. There's no way you could. I mean, if you disagree with me, then it just you're an idiot, and I don't even. I wish you'd never listen to this ever again. Um, they should definitely be in the playoffs. I want to see how they play before I completely buy in that they can win a title, but I love Dame Lillard. I, lo I love what they've done up there. They're definitely, definitely been a great team. They seem to get counted out and then, and then they, they do what they do. Um, so moving on another team in the same division, the Utah jazz, um, they have had a pretty good team for a few years now. I think it sucks that they drafted a player of the caliber of Donovan Mitchell and they go to the playoffs and it's like, Man, if he had another score, you know, somebody else who can put the ball in the hole to play with him. And it's like, oh, yeah, they had Gordon Hayward, but he was upset and left. And it's like, wow, like if Gordon Hayward was just still there, like what this team could be. Cause they needed another score. They really did. And their defense has been great. I mean, that's what's carried them. And this offseason... They trade for Michael Conley, and then they sign Bojan Bogdanovic. And it's like, wait. They got a guy that can create for himself and others, guys that can hit threes. So they're going to have offense now? Oh, neither should really hurt their defense because their defense has been stout. Yeah, this team can definitely, definitely win a championship. And I know nobody's talking about it because there's nothing sexy about this team. There's nothing attractive about Utah. Sorry to anybody in Utah. But it's not 
it's not a glamour city like uh, L.A., uh, Chicago, uh, New York, you know, or even small markets. There are small markets that are more glamorous, like Miami. I mean, just... But don't doubt this team. I would be surprised if they end up outside of the top four and with home court advantage. And they should definitely make it out of the first round. They could end up in the conference finals or the NBA finals. As I said, this team is definitely on my list of NBA title contenders this year. That being said, I'd like to move on to the team that I believe will end up with the number one seed, and that is the Denver Nuggets. This team is so deep with talent. They have the Joker, you know, Nikola Jokic, um, leading the way. Jamal Murray, especially if he can develop more. The return of Michael Porter. They have a lot of continuity. They have a lot of the same team coming back. Paul Millsap. I've always loved Paul Millsap. I think their continuity, along with their talent and depth, is going to be great for the regular season. And I think while a lot of teams are still figuring it out, that they're going to come out hot. And I don't see them slowing down. I mean, and it's not that crazy to think they would get the number one seed when they almost had it last year. I mean, they ended up with number two. And without looking, I believe it was only a game behind. So they can. I think they're going to run away with the number one seed. They could, of course, contend for a title. I kind of want to see how some of the young talent develops. Like a Gary Harris, uh, of course, Jamal Murray, what Michael Porter Jr. does uh, in the NBA. I mean, we hardly saw him play in college with his injuries. Not that I ever watched him play in college, but I just know that he didn't play a lot anyway. Um, it's also they're also another team that could make a trade. I don't know who they trade for to even really put them in a scenario, but I just know that they have so much talent. It may be something that they don't do during the season, um, maybe next off season when somebody like a Bradley Beal is is available. Um, you know, maybe somebody who next season is considered an expiring deal because they're a free agent in 2021 and they're disgruntled, they would have the assets to go after. So I don't see them making a trade, uh, or I say I don't see them making a major trade during this season. So you, I feel like they'll pretty much have um, the same core, which is why I believe that they'll run away with the number one seed. Um, yeah, so moving forward to the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Timberwolves are another <laughs> interesting team. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them because they kind of piss me off almost. Carl Anthony Towns, such an amazing talent. Andrew Wiggins has talent. He's shown it. And then on other nights, mm, so it's like, I don't know. You're like, what are you going to do? They seem so mediocre, and then sometimes they struggle to even be that. They should be one of those teams in the fight for a playoff seed. Maybe not a high seed. They should be in the fight for a 7 or 8. But realistically, I bet if a... I, I, I just feel like they're going to end up uh, around the 12th, you know, 12th position. You know, another lottery pick. Uh, I don't know. So Oklahoma City, <laughs> they, not to go too far back, but man, they had, they had the big four that they drafted. They were stupid enough to let James Harden go. And listen, nobody knew James Harden was going to be as good as he is today. I don't even think James Harden knew that. I, I doubt the Rockets knew that. But we all knew he was good. 
And we all knew that the Thunder was stupid for letting him go. And of course, the team never reached the same peak it did in 2012. Kevin Durant leaves. You know, they're trading Serge Ibaka. They reset around Russell Westbrook, who I don't want to get into too much. I mean, of course, I'll talk about him when I get to Houston. They eventually bring in Paul George. It looks like they should be good again. And they never really build a team. I don't like Billy Donovan as a head coach in the NBA. I, you know, they, for these first round outs were always upsetting because they should have been title contenders. I don't know. So here we are. Chris Paul's there. God only knows if he's going to play the whole season. See, this team could be fun if it stays. You know, if Chris Paul's there all season, Stephen Adams, Shea Gildress, you know, Danilo Gallinari, Terrence Ferguson's all right. But then that's it. They just have no depth. So they're definitely not making the playoffs. They're going to be, you know, <laughs> even though the Wolves should be better, I think they'll be about as good as the Wolves, you know, around that 12th spot, you know, in the conference. They're going to be back in the lottery. I wouldn't be surprised if they end up trading Chris Paul. It would be interesting to see what they end up getting back. Of course, the team, like I mentioned earlier, that's been discussed a lot is Miami because they already have one superstar, and it'd be nice to add another star to play with him because they don't have enough, as I talked about. It's just what are you willing to give up to get an aging star that's paid a lot of money. A lot. And he's not an expiring deal either. Whew. Yeah, that contract's tough. Chris Paul's tough, but that contract is real tough. Um, yeah, that's about, that's about it on the Thunder. <laughs> um, so let's go to Texas. Um, Texas has three good teams. Let's start in Houston, uh, where Russell Westbrook went. Of course, he's teamed up with James Harden. What's interesting to me is the window of where this team can go as they are currently constructed. James Harden and Russell Westbrook have never been known as stout defenders. And, of course, they're both Ball dominant players, or they've been ball dominant players, you know. If this somehow blows up on both ends of the floor and it doesn't work and they start to have problems and things just get worse as it goes, this is one of those weird situations. And I don't, here's the thing is that Russell Westbrook contract isn't going to be easy to trade either. With the amount of money he's owed. And if he... He already proved he can't get out of the first round, even with another star. And if he has a problem here, who's going to want him for that much money? And do you trade James Harden? I mean, that just sounds crazy. Because he's clearly your best player. And he's... But he's... Clearly, the easier to trade. I mean, who wouldn't want to trade for James Harden? I mean, this I, I can see this going bad. I think they'll win games based on pure talent. So even if it goes really bad, they might just miss the playoffs because they're around 500 and the West is so deep with good teams that that's not enough and you might need 47, 48 wins. But on the weird flip side, if they can figure out how to coexist offensively and run a system, meanwhile on the defensive end, at least giving it efforts to play respectable level of defense, they do have some decent role players around them. 
they could surprise people and go and win an NBA title. I feel like they're probably going to end up somewhere in the middle. I see them as a 50-win team. I think their talent is just going to score enough buckets, hit enough threes to win 50 games. But then I think they lose in the first round of the playoffs. The West is so deep. You're In the first round, you're playing somebody good. And I just don't... There's not a lot of matchups that I can see them in that I think they're going to be good enough to come out of the first round. So moving forward to San Antonio. Um, they've been in the playoffs 22 straight years. Anybody who's ever picked against them in the past 22 years has been wrong. And I don't see a reason why we have to pick against them in year 23. And I'm not going to. Greg Popovich finds a way. He has LaMarcus Aldridge, DeMar DeRozan, and some good young players. There's no reason to pick them outside the playoffs. I don't see them towards the top. I don't see them contending for a title. But to say they can't get a 7 or 8 seed and maybe win a game, you know, take take a couple of games off of another team. I I don't know. I just don't know why people still doubt this team. Spurs in the playoffs. End of story. Moving on. We have the Dallas Mavericks. To me, Dallas is going to be like Sacramento. I talked about Sacramento before. And, of course, we talked about um, Atlanta and Chicago in the East. They're going to be that team that um, great team to watch, fun to watch. I mean, I'm a league pass guy. Um, if you are, definitely watch some of these games. I mean, Chris Stapps, he's looked good in preseason, so let's hope that he continues to be in form this season. Luca, uh, he was so great to watch in his rookie season and should be getting better. I'm not saying this Dallas team is great, but they have a lot of good talent, young talent. I would put them around the 500 mark. I think that they should be hovering around 500. I think Luca and Chris Stapps can win them enough games. And if something happens to one of the playoff teams and they fall out, just like Sacramento, I can see them possibly trying to steal one of those spots. I think Dallas and Sacramento are the two teams that are going to be just close enough to the playoffs. Then if your stars get hurt and you lose a few games and slip out, these guys can steal your spot. So definitely watch these guys. Um, moving on to the New Orleans Pelicans. Listen, I know y'all love Zion. I've enjoyed watching him play too. But let's not overrate the kid. Put a, so high of expectations on him and this team. Listen, I love Drew Holiday as a player. J.J. Redick is nice. I think Derek Favors actually is a good fit. Brandon Ingram is a good player, although I don't think he's a good fit. I think Lonzo Ball gets a little underrated because his father overrated him so much. The people out of hate kind of do the opposite. But what are we talking about after that? This team doesn't have depth. It has youth. As the team is still trying to put things together. Zion Williamson has never played a game in the league. He still needs to develop. I think he's going to be good too. I'm not trying to knock him. But there is still the chance that he's not what we think he is. Everybody's talking like he already won when he hasn't played. Let's slow down. They will not make the playoffs. Just not going to happen. Sorry, J.J. Redick. I know you have a streak. You signed with the wrong team. You will not be in the playoffs 
in 2020. Not going to happen. There's easily 10 teams better than them. And only 8 get to make the playoffs. Can't wait to watch Zion play, though. This team should be fun. I'm also excited to see Lonzo outside of L.A. Because I think he's going to have a really good season. And I think people are are going to be forced to recognize that he is a good player. I'd be curious if they end up trading Brandon Ingram, though. I wouldn't want to pay him. I think he's going to get paid more than he's worth. Then on top of it, with those blood clots, especially because Chris Bosh was so recent with a similar issue that forced him into early retirement, I'd be hesitant to pay him, especially long-term. I don't think he fits this team with with uh, Zion, which is another concern I'd have because obviously Zion is the guy you're building around because if we're all betting, I think most people are betting that Zion ends up being a great player. I don't think... I think Zion will be better than Brandon Ingram, and so if I have to trade one, it's Ingram. And that's just kind of how it goes when there's two players that don't fit together. You keep the better one. So... Sorry, Brandon. You you might get traded. And it'd be interesting to see where he goes and what they can bring back for him. I mean, he's he's still a good player. I mean, he's not bad. I'm, I'm not trying to knock Brandon Ingram at, at all. I've actually kind of enjoyed watching him play. It'd be interesting to see what team sees a fit for him and, and, and makes that move and what they're willing to give up, though. So definitely be interesting to watch. Uh, this is going to be a team that's fun to watch. I, I don't think they're going to win a ton of games. I think they're going to be a 30-win team. Um, definitely fun to watch, though. Uh, mostly because of Zion, of course. Um, I don't watch him a ton in college. I don't watch a ton of college, honestly. But I watched him a, a little bit. I saw parts of a couple of games. And uh, definitely fun to watch. That's not even a debate. So... Another team that should be fun to watch, even though they're not going to win a lot. And actually the last team I have to discuss today, the uh, Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah. Grit and grind is over. It's official. First Marcus All left midseason. Then Mike Conley in the offseason. But they have Jaron Jackson and John Morant. Can't complain there. Two nice young pieces. I know they got uh, Jonas in the uh, Marcus All trade, and they got some other young players. Uh, um, I'll probably watch a couple games. Just kind of curious how uh, how it all mixes up. They're definitely um, playing for lottery balls this year, though. I mean, it is what it is. It's a cycle, right? So. That's all 30 teams. I just wanted to say a little piece. This dragged down a little longer than I hoped, unfortunately. Um, hope you didn't mind me uh, ran out. I, wa- I wanted to hit every team, though. I think uh, every team deserves that in the preview. I mean, they're all the same record. Um, as the season goes on, obviously, there's going to be uh, teams I may discuss more or less. Uh, or not at all, because they're just not worth it. Um, my <laughs> plan, of course, will be to, of course, keep this short, you know, so we don't want to, I don't want long ass fucking podcast every fucking week. Um, so yeah, that being said, I'll, uh, I'll be back next week. Um, nice little birthday edition. I'll be 36 next week. I mentioned I had 35 earlier. I'm going to be 36 next Tuesday on the 29th, October 29th. Yep. So uh, I'll be back. Um, try to launch. A, you know, talk about the first week. I'll try to do it early in the week. You know, before I start celebrating. Um, of course, you can find me on Twitter at White Snoop Forty Four. Um, also on Facebook, I have a Facebook page. Just uh, search uh, White Snoop. It's Facebook dot com slash White Snoop Forty Four. Um, of course, it's my putting this on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash white 244 Um, yeah. 
So definitely uh, find me on Facebook and uh, Twitter. Of course, on the comment section here, we can comment. We'll uh, keep it respectable and clean. But uh, definitely love uh, talking hoops. I'm in a couple of Facebook groups with some people I'll be sharing this with. Shout out to you guys if you're know, one of the people in those groups with me. It's always good times. But yeah, definitely... Uh, Definitely find me on social media. We'll uh, chat ball. I'll be back. So uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, of course, this is my channel. It's more than just uh, basketball. I don't have a uh, podcast hub at this point. So uh, you'll see all the other crazy stuff I decide to post. But uh, yeah, we try to keep it entertaining, you know. I mean, you just go around, you'll see. I got plenty of videos up already. Try to keep it fun, you know. Life's gotta be fun, man. It's too short. You know, we're not here for a long time. So I'm trying to be here for a good time. So, y'all have a great night. And hopefully we'll be hopefully we'll be back uh, next week and you'll be here with us. Alright, later.
videos on YouTube and subscribe to youtube.com slash whitesnoop44. Follow and tweet me at 44 Entertainment at whitesnoop44. Like me on Facebook or follow me at facebook.com slash 44entertainment or facebook.com slash whitesnoop44. Email me at whitesnoopproductions at gmail.com.